Again, just a personal word of thanks to everyone who's come to listen to the gospel today. We are delighted to see you. And the only reason we wish you to be here is this, that you may come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. And be sure of heaven and home. That's why God gave us some. That every sinner may have an opportunity and a chance to be in heaven. And if you're not saved today, please listen to the word of God. Go in for God's salvation. And make Christ your choice. You'll never regret it. We commend the Lord Jesus Christ to you. As a wondrous and blessed saviour. Of sinful men. I want to read uh, a few scattered verses. Throughout the Bible today. The first is in Luke chapter 15. This verse was read a fortnight ago at the harbour. Luke chapter 15 and verse 1. Then drew near unto him. All the publicans and sinners. For to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. In chapter 19, if the same gospel just a page or two over, chapter 19 is a book of Luke. And verse 41, the Lord Jesus is coming near the city of Jerusalem. And when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it, saying, If thou hadst known, even thou at least, and this thy day, the things which belong to thy peace, but now they are hid from thine eyes. Uh, I want to read down Romans chapter 10. My brother David Amos read this in the hall the other night, and I want to read it again today. Romans chapter 10 and verse 8. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. The word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth in him, shall not be ashamed. Ephesians chapter 2. I'm just reading them in the order I want to look at the man. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 13. Just breaking out of verse 12. That at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world, but now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were afar off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. And many will know I'm going to read in James chapter 5 for the last verse. James chapter 5 and verse 8. Be ye, pa be ye also patient. Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord. <coughs> no. Aye. The Libby have noticed that the, the things that have linked these verses together in my mind is simply the thought of Christ drawing near. You know, he draws near in the first reading in wondrous grace. And look, chapter 15, we read these words. Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners, and he is with them. I want to think for a moment of the Lord drawing near in grace. I want to think very sadly of him drawing near in grief, for he drew near to the city, and he wept. He wept over that city. They had rejected him. They had turned their back on their Messiah. They had said no to God's salvation. Soon they would take him outside the walls of Jerusalem and crucify him. And he wept over them, drawing near and grief. I want to think in Romans chapter 10 of drawing near in the gospel. The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, the word of faith which we preach. And I want to think of how the gospel has been brought near to us by God's grace. It's not far away. Every sinner can be saved. Every sinner can understand the simplicity of the message and embrace the message 
of God's salvation, seen in the gospel, and it has been brought near to us. I want to think of the grounds of being brought near. We've been made nigh by the blood of Christ. And it will be my joy for a few minutes to look again at Calvary's cross and see the blessed Son of God suffering and dying in behalf of sinners, wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. Why? That he may bring us to God, the Savior at Calvary, died for you. He died to bring you to God. He died to bring sinners like myself back to himself. The Lord Jesus, through his precious blood, can make sinners, once aliens, once strangers, once foreigners to his grace. He can now bring them back to himself. If you're not saved today, he can bring you back to God. He can save your soul. We are made nigh by the blood of Christ. We're not here preaching good works. We're not preaching gospel hall attendance. We're here preaching the value of the precious blood of Christ to cleanse from sin. We who are once afar so off have been made nigh by the blood of Christ. And I want to finish in a solemn note. The coming of the Lord draweth nigh. And I want to think of the Lord coming back. Lord drawing nigh and coming back again. Coming back in government upon a world that was rejected. Have I wonder, are you ready? If the Lord Jesus was to come back. You know, these are wonderful verses we've read. I wonder, is there anyone today who feels themselves a sinner before God? I wonder, is there anybody today and you feel wretched, you feel undone, you know only too well you're not fit for heaven. None of us are. The man on the platform would never be in heaven in his own right or good. He would have to go to hell along with every other sinner. But you know, my friend, this man receives sinners and he is with them. The sinners and Christ's day, they drew near to hear him. They drew near to hear the words of grace and mercy that he poured into their ears. They then drew near unto him, all the publicans and sinners, for to hear him. Why? Because in Christ there's hope for publicans and sinners. For Christ there's hope for people who feel their unworthiness, who feel they're on their way to hell, who know they're going there rightfully, who would like to be saved from that. They then drew near unto him. They came to the right person. All the publicans and sinners, no one felt excluded. Christ and his love and grace and mercy has place for all. And if there's somebody today sitting in the car and you say, Tommy, listen, you don't know how far away I went in life. It was all right for you. You were saved as a young fella. You never have touched the depth of sin and the partner from God that I've known. Then drew near unto him. All the publicans and sinners and the Sadducees and Pharisees were, and the scribes were right when they said, This man receiveth sinners and he is with them. My friend, there's a welcome in Christ for you. If you would like to be saved today, if you feel your sin the way these publicans and sinners did, there's a welcome and wondrous grace. Grace that goes out to those who don't deserve it. Grace to the grace is everyone who will come. This man receiveth sinners, and he is with them. Is there somebody in the car park today, and you would like to be free from your burden of sin? You would like to be saved. Christ still receiveth sinful men. Sometimes we sing, sing it o'er and o'er again. Christ receiveth sinful men. Make the message clear and plain. Christ receives sinful men. He draws near in grace, rather than expelling us, rather than endowing us in hellfire for eternity. He would rather receive us in grace and forgive our sins. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. These people got to know about it in his day when he was here among us. And the Pharisees were absolutely right when they said, This man receiveth. The Lord Jesus Christ loves you, my friend. He died at Calvary that you may be saved. Why would you go to hell if he done so much for you? Why would you lose your soul when this blessed one left the heights of glory to suffer on a cross to bring salvation to ruin man? This man 
receive the sinners. And he was with them. And there was people who drew near and felt his grace. Drawing near, tasting of his grace. My friend, has he not come near? Has he not come near at these meetings? Has he not come near in this village? And in wondrous grace, he invites people to come to him. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. And I might, no, no, not I might. Don't I think about it. I will give thee rest. There's salvation in Christ for the guiltiest sinner, for the vilest and most unworthy. That's the people he came to save. I came not to call the righteous, he said, but sinners to repentance. And God loves you, would love you to be saved, would want you to be saved, and gave his son to die on Calvary that you might be saved. Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. If there's somebody in the car today and you feel so unworthy, you feel so unclean, you feel your absolute need of forgiveness, this man, this man receiveth sinners and he is with them. That's the wonderful message of grace of the Bible that I hold in my arm. You can be saved and God wants to save you. These people weren't going to miss it. They drew near to hear him with all their heart and soul. And it's only a true saying, a wonderfully true saying, this one receiveth sinners and eateth with them. I'm just a sinner like everyone else, no different. Wouldn't be in my arm but to call you a sinner. God calls us all sinners, every one of us. People that go to the gospel hall are just the same as everyone else. We're in need of cleansing and forgiveness, or else we go to hell with everyone else. There's no difference in us. We all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We're not shouting down at people about being so unbothered. But we want you to understand that's what the Bible thinks about us all. And that's why Christ came to die for us all, so that every one of us may be received and embraced in the arms of everlasting love. Voices you. People will receive that with open arms. They take that whenever this opportunity comes there. They didn't know it, you know. They didn't take it. The Lord Jesus Christ was known when he came as a man of sorrows and one of the with grief. The prophecy that speaks of him as the suffering Savior said, We had as it were our faces from him. He was despised and he esteemed in God. And you know, towards the end of his journey, Calvary is just a few days away. He comes over the brow of the hall and looks over the city. We read about it here in chapter 19. And when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it. Saying, if thou hadst known even thou, at least in this thy day, the things which belong to thy peace. But now, but now they are hidden from mine eyes. Friends, can we feel the import of the tears of Christ? He had come from the highest glory of heaven, glory beyond our imagination, glory that we often speak about, or oh, glory that we try to comprehend from the pages of the Bible. He left it all behind. He held the highest place above, adored by all the sons of flame, the creator and maker and sustainer of everything, his majesty and his greatness beyond compare. compare. The incomparable Christ of God. Son of the eternal Father's love. He left it all behind to suffer on the cross that these people in his day and the people in this car park and the people in this village and province and the people in the whole world may be saved. He left it for that reason. He left it for the spittle of Pilate's judgment hall, the blind folding of the crown of thorns, the nails in his hands and feet. He left it for the rejection and the nakedness of Calvary. He left it for the abandonment of God when God would lay upon him the iniquity and judgment for us all. He did all that 
for these people. He did all that for you. And that is why, my friend, his tears are real. They're real tears of grief. He wasn't play acting. He wasn't just going through the motions. Deep in his heart, he wanted men to be blessed righteously. And he had to come. And he had to suffer. He had to bleed. He had to die. And when these people turned their back on him, he wept over the city. My friend, I wonder what Christ, and I speak metaphorically, of grief in his heart. Weep bitter tears because you never came. Because you never trusted him. Because you took this as second rate. Because you never put it first. Because the business and the family and the friends all came first, but not Christ. It says he come over the city and he wept, scalding tears of grief over it. Because he had left glory to die for these people. He had left to embrace them and bring them back to himself. And they had said no. The day of the opportunity was past. I was going to be too late. My friend, I wonder what about you? He came to do for you what he came to do for the nation of Israel. He came to do it for the whole world. His sufferings were real and felt beyond our ken or beyond our estimation. Who could ever understand what fell on Christ at Calvary? When God made to meet upon him the iniquity of us all. We often quote those words on him, Almighty vengeance fell. And would have sent the world to hell. He bore it for our own race. And thus became our hiding place. My friend, when you don't take that, that brings grief to the heart of God. When you don't take that, my friend, how dreadful the situation to not be saved and turn your back on such matchless, wondrous love. These people turned their back on it. And he wept over them. The grief of the Savior growing near in grief. I wonder are you going to leave these meetings in the car park? I wonder does your mind go back over 20, 30, 40, 50 years? And maybe you saw it as a child in a Sunday school and one of the many churches or the halls around this village. And you heard the message of the love of God as yet you've never taken Christ as your Savior. Maybe you've come from a home where Christianity is a well-known thing. Friends and family are saved. And you don't have it yet and you don't want it yet and you're going to push it from you yet. My friend, the day can come and it will be too late. He wept. Scalding tears of grief over that side. I'm encouraging you today when it was still the day of grace. He said, he said in this verse, if thou, had, if thou hadst known, even thou at least in this thy day, the things that belong to thy peace, but now they are hid. Now they are hid. Isn't that serious? Isn't that searching? Oh, you must say, Tommy, when your preaching's right, you know, but I'll get it sorted sometime. My friend, you don't have eternity, neither do I. We don't know our frail mortal man passing away. What about your soul? These people are an opportunity. They just turned their back on it. I'm encouraging you today to trust Christ as your Savior while you still have the opportunity. While you still are in the day of grace, if thou hadst known even thou, and this, thy day, this is the day of salvation. This was Israel's day of salvation, and this day they just turned their back on and crucified their Savior. I wouldn't do that to someone. My friend, you're sitting in this car unsaved. Turning their back on Christ. I, I want to get saved someday. How do you know you have tomorrow? That's why you're encouraging me to take it today. Because today may be thy latest breath. Thy little moment here be done. When we're, can, can I ask you, where will you spend eternity? If today is your last day. He drew near in grace. He drew near in grief. Drawing near in the gospel. Somebody said, I'd like you get saved. I would love to get saved. I've listened to all this preaching for years. I've heard about Christ's death on the cross for sinners. I know that God loves me. I know he gave his son to die for me. I would never deny the work of Christ to meet the sinners deep. But how do I make it mine? How do I make it mine? That's what I read in Romans chapter 
10. And we gave it read on Wednesday night just the same. The word is nigh thee. The word is nigh thee. That's how you get it. God's salvation. The word is nigh thee. I spoke, I spoke a moment or two ago to people who heard the gospel. It'll be long before I was born. The word is nigh thee. Oh, you've heard of God's love. You've heard of Christ's death at Calvary for sinners. You know that that atonement that Christ made at Calvary was that every sinner may be in heaven if they would turn and trust the Savior. You know that. You know he died for you. You know that God loves you. You know that at Calvary, the debt of sin was paid by precious blood. The word is nigh thee. It's not something far away. Even, even in my mouth. If I was to come down and knock every window, every car here and say to people, who do you get to heaven? I don't believe there's anyone people wouldn't know. The word is nice. It's even in my mouth. Salvation is in Christ and his atoning death at Calvary. And in my heart. People know it to be true. Do you know it to be true? I think you do. I Paul looked up to the, the eyes of a Roman governor one day and he said, Dost thou believe? He says, I know that thou believest. I know that thou believest. He wasn't saved. The word of faith which we preach. That's what we're trying to preach. The word of faith. Something to be received. Something to be taken. Something to be rested on. To take that step of faith. Let us thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. Maybe that's what you're afraid to do. You won't step out in faith and say, Jesus, I will trust thee. Trust thee with my soul. Kill thee lost and helpless. Thou canst make me whole. There is none in heaven or on earth like thee. Thou hast died for sinners. Therefore, Lord, for me. This was taking me to heaven, my friend. Not because I'm wearing a suit and have a big Bible sitting here. Or I go to the gospel hall. Those would never fit me for anything. But because the sinless Savior died, my sinful soul is counted free. For God the justice satisfied to look on him and pardon a rotten hell deserving sinner like me. The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. The word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead. What a wonderful Savior who has triumphed over death. And Calvary dealing with my sins, loving he loved me, dying he saved me, buried he carried my sins far away, rising he justified, freely forever. Someday he's coming, oh glorious day. Our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. We dare not trust the sweetest freedom, but holy name of Jesus. Through that gospel, that I have believed it was brought into our home when I was a wee fellow of 11. Near the right to our very doors. That's what we're trying to do in the harbor. Bring that word of faith right to you. Many of you know it. Many of you are heard with it. Many of us heard it in your own churches and halls around the place. You just haven't abandoned yet. We're trying to bring it as near as we can. So as you can just reach out by the hand of faith and take Christ to your Savior and step out and faith and commitment and believe on him to the saving of your soul. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. Oh, my friend, believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead. You may be saved. No, I said you will be saved. Thou shalt be saved. For with heart and believe. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Wonderful thing when you can look under the face of another person and say, listen, I'm going to heaven. I trust in Christ. I know what I'm depending on. I know what I'm resting on. I'm sure today because I'm resting on Christ and on nothing else. The scripture saith, whosoever believeth in him shall not be ashamed. Our time's up. Drawing near to God. For the grounds of it. You who once were afar off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. There's no greater subject. You know, we uh, was read in our meeting this morning the song of heaven, 
Will be on to heaven, loved us, washed us from our sins in his own blood. Made nigh by the blood of Christ. The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. What brings us near is the precious blood of Christ. You know, that gives God the right and the power to bring a sinner near to him. Christ's death has dealt with sin. His blood has removed that wretched, sinful curse. And the sinner who believes is free can say, the Savior died for me, can point to his atoning blood, and say, this makes my peace with God. We have been made nigh by good works. No. By being baptized. No. Made nigh by the blood of Christ. Made nigh by the blood of Christ. That precious blood was shed for every sinner at Calvary. That was shed for you. You can be brought near to God today. You don't need to be at a distance any longer. For the precious blood of Christ was shed to bring you near to God. We've read finally the coming of the Lord draws nigh. We've been reminded a lot at our hall recently and in days that are past about the coming of the Lord. It used to be more preached about and more talked about. When I was a wee fellow before I was saved, I used to worry in case the Lord would come back and I would be left behind for the judgment of God. Somebody says, well, you know, Tommy, here. You have been talking about this for a brief week. Why? My Bible says, and we read it together, the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. We're not here to appeal to people's emotions or make people sit and listen to us blathering on about stuff that we've made up. I don't think there's any thinking person in the car today. I'm talking about thinking people in the car today that realizes. That the wars and rivers of wars, that the diseases and the upheaval and the complete mayhem out there in a godless, ungovernable world is just a sign of the fact that the Lord is coming back again. Don't, be, don't you make a mistake about it, my friend. What you're hearing about in the East is just the beginning of sorrows. The Lord's coming back again. We, as the church, have no signs to look for. Soon he will come and snatch every believer away violently and quickly. And the whole church will be gone. And if you're not saved, your opportunity to be saved will be gone along with it. That's why we're imploring upon you to trust Christ. All the signs looking forward to a day when the judgments of earth will culminate in Israel. They're all with us. The coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Are you ready? The coming of the Lord draweth nigh. He's coming in government. For two millennia now, the gospel has poured into the ears of people to trust Christ to be ready for his return. I wonder if you ever responded to it in your day. The coming of the Lord draweth nigh. I ask the question as I finish, where he to come today? Would you go to be with him in heaven? Or would you be left behind? Never to see another Christian? Never to hear another gospel message? Just left behind for the judgment of God. The coming of the Lord. He's come in grace. He knew great grief for those who wouldn't trust him. The gospel brings the message right into our hearts and minds, right into our soul. You know how to get saved. You know what Christ has done for you. Why not make Christ your Savior today? The precious blood of Christ has brought sinners, these Ephesian people that we read about, they were once worshippers of the devil, if you read their story. Whenever the gospel came and they were saved, they, they burnt all their occult books and their wicked gods. The blood of Christ removed their sin and brought them near. The coming of the Lord draweth the night. Sinner, how thy heart is troubled. 
God is drawing very near. Has he? Has he grown near to you in the weeks that you've come to the car park? Has God's Holy Spirit, not because we're preaching, we're nobodies. But from the word of God, has he drawn near and touched your innermost being with thoughts about eternity and thoughts about Calvary and thoughts about your soul? Don't push them from you. Don't push them from you any longer. The coming of the Lord draweth nigh. And today is the day that you should see him. Not tomorrow. Today. Those have eaten asking you. Just as we said. Son or how thy heart is troubled. God is drawing very near. Thank God he's drawing near in grace. He doesn't have to. But he has. Do not hide thy deep emotion. Do not check that falling tear. And that hand goes on to say, Oh, be saved. His grace is free. Oh, be saved. Die for thee. So he died. I commend you, the Lord Jesus. He has come very near and right into our midst and to humanity and died for us and for us. Died for you. Please trust him as your Savior. Thank you very much. Heavenly Father, we come at this meeting today as we end. The people who have come to listen and all of us, we need thy presence with us every passing hour. We pray that all of us saved and unsaved will know thy blessing. Pray thy Holy Spirit will do a work in people's hearts that we cannot do and reach places in people's souls that we cannot reach. And may people respond to that message even today. We ask thy parting blessing. And in the week that lies ahead in my world, may all of us be preserved and kept from trouble and danger and upsetting circumstances. And if we're not seeing it, we pray that before this week ends, even today, we have the right to have the wisdom of the trust of myself. We ask thy parting blessings.